Welcome guys. In this video, I will give you 20 awesome tips and tricks that you need to know as a PUBG player, and it will help you to get better at this game. First trick, crouch jumping. Crouch jumping is really useful in many situations, when you do a normal jump or vaulting, you won't be able to shoot at a specific time, so your enemies can take advantage of it while vaulting the window. The way you perform this crouch jumping is by moving towards the window, and jump at the right timing and crouch at the right timing, all while moving forward. Now in the step-by-step -step process. The timing of the jump is incredibly important. You need to jump so your head hits the upper part of the window frame, which will allow you to stand on the window frame, then you press crouch so you can fit in the opening of the window, and then move forward to exit the window. If all of these steps were done quickly, your movement and reflexes will look super fast. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison between vaulting and crouch jumping. Crouch jumping will allow you to shoot continuously, but while vaulting, you will have a slight delay to shoot, which can get you killed. So crouch jumping will allow you to engage faster in close combat fights, and completely eliminates the combat downtime that you have when vaulting through a window. If you want to take it to advanced level, you can do prone jump, like this. This is a lot harder compared to normal crouch jump. You have to press prone button and jump button at the same time, in order to make that prone jump. You can also use crouch instead of prone. When only doing a half a crouch jump, you can actually sit inside the frame of the window. This is a huge advantage because when doing this you can engage enemies that you normally wouldn't even be able to see. Tip number 2. Full boost before getting into fights. To get a perfect full boost you either use a painkiller and an energy drink, if you have an adrenaline syringe make sure to use it, it will take the same time as a painkiller, but gives you a max boost. Full boost will give you a little bit faster movement which may help you in some situations, especially in close range fights. And the best thing about full boost is that it will heal you while you're fighting for example when you're fighting in the blue zone, it will constantly heal you and keep you alive while you're fighting against your enemies. And if you win the fight you can loot the energy drinks and painkillers from the enemies. When you are in the late game or last circles make sure to boost up fully, because there is no need when the game is over, use your utility while you have, including the grenades, smokes, and don't save the bullets, use whatever you have before the game ends. Tip number 3. Always leave one bullet in your magazine in order to reload faster. For example, we have here M416, if we reload from zero bullets it would take us 1.5 seconds. But if you have one or more bullets in your magazine, it would take 1.3 seconds to reload. So this would save 0.2 seconds which may save you in some situations, but if we take a look at weapons like DP-29 or M249, the difference would be bigger. To fully reload DP-28 would take 5.4 seconds, and when you leave one or more bullets in the magazine, it would take 4.4 seconds, so it will save you about 1 second in reloading time. And this trick will definitely help you in some situations if you can remember. Tip number 4. Try to avoid moving in the open field areas. Whenever you are rotating or traveling on foot, you need to make sure that you are rotating in the correct pathway. While moving in the open fields you try to maintain a position close to cover whether it is a tree or a rock or any type of obstacle, which can provide you with a cover. It's important to maintain a cover when you getting shots at you, you can quickly get into nearby obstacles which can provide you with a cover and start shooting back, this will give you the ability to put the pressure on your opponents. Tip number 5. Yellow color blood is more visible to most of the people. I made a video on which color blood is more visible, and most of the viewers voted to yellow, and even I would highly recommend using blood color as yellow, as it will help you to spot the hits much better. Yellow blood can be activated by going into graphics settings and color blind mode and selecting tritinopia or deuteranopia. But you can also set a specific blood color to a specific map. For example, in Orangel, most of the ground is filled with grass or yellowish land, so red blood color would be a better choice. And in Sanhok everything is green, so yellow blood color would make it easier to spot the hits. And in Miramar the land is in yellowish color, and yellow is a bright color. So green color blood would be more noticeable. And now in the Vikendi it is filled with white snow, so red and green blood would be a better choice. But it's my personal opinion it's not 100% accurate, some people prefer other colors, but which color do you think is easier to spot in all the maps? 
But I think yellow is the overall best blood color because it's bright. Tip number 6. Don't stand really close to the windows. I have seen a lot of players exposing their body by standing really close to the window and thinking they are safe and end up getting killed. Don't stand right in front of the window like this, if you do then you are exposing your body and you can be an easy target to hit. So you need to maintain a certain distance between you and the window. And if you stand here like this. Players from right side can easily spot you, so I would highly recommend crouching, now you are a little bit safer than before, and use peak to get better TPP angle. But if you want to be more safe. Then you prone like this. This will give you max safety while taking TPP. Tip number 7. Always try to pick up snipers. While playing squads make sure you are having one player running with a bolt action sniper rifles who are talented at shooting is extremely effective. If you are a sniper for your team or if any of your teammates are skilled at sniping, make sure you give them the proper gear, firstly make sure your snipers are equipped with the highest range scope that your team has to offer, and in case if your team has level 3 helmet, be sure to give the helmet to your sniper as he will be needing it the most. Tip number 8. MK14 is the most powerful and dangerous weapon in this game, so if you ever found it in a drop, make sure to pick it up, it can be used in close range or mid range even at long range. You can literally wipe out the squads with this gun, but this weapon has the highest damage in any fully automatic weapon, so it will have higher recoil. Learn how to handle this weapon in close range. If you play FPP mode you may notice that few weapons hip fire will block your view, example like this. To fix this you need to either use flash hider or a suppressor. Using a compensator will not fix this. And the last tip. If you play squads or duos learn how to give callouts the most important callouts are the enemy's location. Here are the most common house names in a wrangle. Triple Story Building Garage House Mini Balconies Attic House Double Story Building Squad House Hotel Small shop The cafe Double story shop Magic house Small rectangle Large rectangle Warehouse Square house Sniper Tower Plank House or Wooden House Apartments Wooden Shack A Shack or Shed Tool Shed or Shack Supermarket Gas Station Triple Warehouse Barn house or farmhouse. Watchtower. Guard tower. Glass house or showroom. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. If you learned something new today, hit the like button and subscribe for more upcoming content like these. Hope you enjoy my bot gameplay and see you guys in the next one.